As I've shown in previous videos, the gamma function, as seen here by this interval, generalizes the factorial function. And in this video, we're going to look at the gamma function evaluated at 1 half, or in other words, if we use the generalized factorial formula, this would be minus 1 half factorial. So to do this, we'll just plug 1 half in here for x and evaluate. So gamma of 1 half is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus t times t to the 1 half minus 1 dt. And now we just have to simplify. So notice now we just have minus 1 half here. And one way to evaluate this is to set t equal to w squared. And from here, dt will just be 2w dw. So we just have to make these substitutions. So this is now equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, since the bounds won't change, e to the minus w squared times w squared to the minus 1 half, and then dt is this here, so 2w dw. So this w squared to the minus 1 half will just simplify to w to the minus 1, which will cancel out with this w to the first power. So this and this cancel each other out. So what we're left with is that the integral is equal to twice the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus w squared dw. And one thing we can notice is that this function here is an even function. Since if we replace w with a minus w, we would get back the exact same function. And because of this, we can rewrite the integral. Instead of having this 2 in front, the integral will be from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus w squared dw. Remember, in a basic calculus class, you're typically taught going from this step here to this step to simplify the work. But the reason we do it the opposite way is because this integral on the right here is known as the Gaussian integral, and it comes up often in probability. And there's a nice trick we can use to actually evaluate an integral like this. So what I'll do is I'll redefine it, calling it i, so the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus w squared dw. And then what I'll do next is I'll square this integral. So I'll rewrite this. And now this integral is just multiplied by itself. But on this part, I'll replace w with a different variable, say v, since it won't actually change the value of the integral. So the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus v squared dv. And the product of these integrals can just be rewritten as a double integral. So now this i squared is rewritten as the integral from minus infinity to infinity. That's the first integral, and here's the inner integral. And then we have e to the minus w squared times e to the minus v squared dw dv. And what I'll do next is just combine these into one exponent. So now we have that this is equal to this double integral. And notice that I combined the exponents and I factored out a negative 1 from each. And writing it this way makes it clear that we can make a substitution using polar coordinates. So if we say that r squared is the same thing as w squared plus v squared, and r dr d theta is the same thing as dw dv, we can rewrite this now in a much simpler form. So this double integral, so the first integral is in regards to theta, so 0 to 2 pi 
And the inner integral starts with a radius of 0 and goes to infinity. And we have e to the minus r squared r dr d theta. And from here, we just need to make a simple u substitution where u is r squared and du is 2r dr. And remember, this is just for the inner integral here. And since we have r dr here, we'll need to divide each side of this equation here by 2. So we'll just essentially just put the 2 on the other side. So now our integral becomes the integral from 0 to 2 pi and the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus u times du over 2, and I'll just put that 1 half outside. And then evaluating that inner integral, we have 0 to 2 pi, and the inner integral evaluates to minus e to the minus u from 0 to infinity. And we also need a d theta here and a d theta here. And typically, you would take a limit as some number approaches infinity, but for simplicity, we'll just imagine what happens when this u gets bigger and bigger. This entire expression here tends to zero, for the upper bound at least. And for the lower bound, this expression will become 1 here. So in the end, you'll have negative 1. So writing that down, we have that this is equal to 1 half integral from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, we have 0 for the upper bound and then minus negative 1 for the lower bound and then d theta. So this all simplifies to 1 half integral 0 to 2 pi of d theta and this integral now evaluates to 1 half times theta with the bounds of 0 and 2 pi. So 0 makes this 0, so we really only have to worry about the 2 pi, so we have 1 half times 2 pi, which is just equal to pi. Remember that this entire integral is equal to i squared, where i was that Gaussian integral that we started with when we evaluated gamma of 1 half. So really, i, or gamma of 1 half is equal to the square root of pi. And as we started with, gamma of 1 half from the generalized factorial is minus 1 half factorial.